All right, let's be honest. Etsy needs to be showing your listings on the first page for you to be making daily regular sales or multiple sales per day on one Etsy listing. If Etsy's not regularly showing you on the first page, we're talking about the difference of like multiple sales a day, bestseller badge, 20 add to cart badge versus maybe making a sale once a week or once every few weeks. Because the reality is, is most people when they're searching for their product, they usually find what they're looking for within that first page. So that means that we need to be using first page rank strategies in order for Etsy to be regularly showing our listings on the first page. Although Etsy's not like Amazon, where on Amazon, you can actually go to the bottom of the page and check your exact rank. Although Etsy doesn't do that because you can't actually check your rank. In fact, Etsy is going to show your listing on different search pages, depending on the computer's IP address and the specific location that product's being searched from. So you could be ranked in position one page one in Arizona, but then be on page five in New York. And Etsy's also super cryptic about how they decide where you're going to be and how often you're going to be there. But what we do know is that there's three things that we can be doing that set ourselves up for the very best case scenarios in terms of getting Etsy to promote us on the first page. These three things that we're going to be sharing with you today are not only going to help you get to the first page, but another key factor, which is hold you on the first page, just because you make a great listing and maybe, you know, for a few months you're being shown regularly at top page positions, that doesn't guarantee that you're going to stay there. So these three things that we're going to reveal is also going to encompass showing you how you're going to maintain that competitive rank as competition arises. Number one is building a competitive value proposition. This is by far the number one most important thing when it comes to ensuring your rank on Etsy. An Etsy value proposition is what the buyer sees in your main image and the perceived value of that item versus the price that they're paying. And we're going to discuss how you actually build a competitive value proposition. A lot of times, most times people associate SEO search engine optimization with only keywords. And they think that keywords are the only factor of why you show up in an Etsy search page when someone types in those keywords in the search bar. But I'm here to tell you that what contributes to your SEO and how Etsy determines where you belong goes way farther than just the keywords that you're using. A bigger factor beyond keywords is actually how people are interacting with your listing, meaning the clicks that you earn, the amount of money they spend on your listing, the amount of add to carts you get, the conversion rate. And I'm not saying that keywords aren't important. They're 100 hundred percent important and you're 100 percent going to want to set up your listing for the best case scenario in terms of keywords so to visually explain what i'm talking about here there's five key things that go into getting your product idea to fruition and turn it into an etsy listing you have the research process which is doing the research to even find the product opportunity. Then you have the development process, which is either designing or actually making the prototype or the actual product that you're gonna sell. And then you have the creative marketing department, which is doing the photo shoot, the videography, or setting up the mock-up for the product. And then number four is pricing your item. So making sure that you're priced competitively. And then finally, right before you launch your listing, you have keyword optimization. And so what happens a lot of times is people put either equal part energy or they put more energy into that last part, which is the keyword optimization part. Instead of putting the majority time, I would say 80% of the time should be going towards the first four steps of the listing coming to fruition, which is the research, the development, the creative marketing, and the pricing. And the reason that people like to put a lot of emphasis on keywords or stress over keywords is because honestly, keywords are historically the easiest thing to fix. If it was just a matter of switching up some words and moving some things around, then it would be easy, but it's normally nine out of 10 times. It's not easy. And that energy is better spent in really nailing those first four steps of building a competitive listing. When it comes down to building a competitive value proposition, what we need to do is ensure with confidence that before we push the publish button, we already know that we have built the most competitive listing in comparison to our competition so that we actually earn that click. If this short YouTube video isn't enough information, because this is obviously 
obviously a short YouTube video on how to really make sure that you're building a strong value proposition. I have a completely free Etsy masterclass that takes you through four modules that shows you how to do this. So after I reveal number two and number three, I would suggest going up and getting in that free masterclass because we're gonna go way more in depth than just you know this short video. And again, it's a free masterclass. And the worst thing we can do is invest a bunch of time and energy into products that actually no one wants to buy. And so this masterclass is going to guarantee that you have the information to know what a competitive listing looks like in terms of value proposition before you go to market. All right, and number two is keyword optimization, like we kind of already revealed before. Again, keywords definitely matter. It's just the energy spent should be like 80% value proposition, 20% keywords. The thing is you can go to Etsy right now and you can find listings that have unoptimized titles, tags, and descriptions, but a really strong value proposition. And for whatever reason, even with a lack of SEO in terms of keywords, they'll still have a 20 add to cards badge and a bestseller badge. What you won't find is a listing that has a poor value proposition and poor marketing with a 20 add to cart badge and a bestseller badge with killer keywords. When it comes to keywords, there's two things that you need to understand in terms of setting yourself up for the best case scenario. Number one, keywords contribute to why you show up in the Etsy search pages. The more times a keyword phrase is searched in the search bar, the more potential you have to make more sales. So the amount of potential traffic that isn't even available to you is is based off how many times per month someone's searching for those words. And so the, what does that mean? That means number two, it's our job to go out and find all of the best case potential words that are even available to us that are high search, but then also keyword product fit, meaning they're describing what our product is. And we wanna add in as many words as possible into that listing and our titles, tags, and description. And so just to give you an idea of what tends to happen with keyword research, you're gonna go out and you're going to compile a list, a list of 50 to 100 different long tail keywords that could potentially describe the product that you're selling. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna sort that list based off of price priority long tail and short tail keywords. Long tail keywords meaning more than one word in a phrase. And we're going to make a priority list based off of search volume and competition on what words we like the best. And we're gonna use those words in priority placements of our listing, like the beginning of our titles. And the way that I personally these days have been going about compiling these lists of keywords is by using ChatGPT. So I'll go to ChatGPT, GPT, and I'll type in the prompt. Give me a list of the highest search volume keywords on Etsy for a one-year-old baby onesie. Then sort the list by the highest search but lowest competition on the Etsy platform. And ChatGPT is not only gonna compile this list for you, it will even write the title for you. And Better yet, it will even source where it's getting its information from. I personally pay for the pro plan of ChatGPT, and you know, there's a lot of tools out there that are, you know, Etsy specific tools, but in recent days, I found that this works just as well. I could spend the next 30 minutes talking about how to then set up the priority placement of keywords for your listing. So the psychology of how to actually build a competitive title, tag, and description. I would just cue this free training next, and that training is gonna leave no stone unturned in terms of all of the things that you need to know and understand about doing keyword optimization for your listing. And the good thing about this is, like I said, keywords are something that you're gonna learn once and the optimization of how Etsy wants you to optimize your listing with keywords, you know, you have to ingest this information one time and then once it's in your brain, you're never gonna forget it. So I would say go through that training next because I've given you some clear insight on how I get my best case scenario words, but that training is gonna, again, take you step by step of how to actually position those words and all the tips and tricks on how to set up your titles, tags, and descriptions properly. Just a key note in that video, I'm using a tool called Sales Samurai, which is an Etsy specific tool, which is also a really great tool. Just in recent days, I've been using ChatGPT instead because you just get more bang for your buck because not only is it gonna do the keyword research for you, it will also sort your priority list for you and write your titles, tags, and descriptions for you. So I personally just like to use the AI version because the end result is technically gonna be the same, except one does it for you and one you still have to do it yourself. And finally, number three, that's not only gonna get you to the first page the fastest, but also maintain your rank is 
Etsy ads. Etsy ads build a moat or a layer of protection around your shop as competition arises. And I think that one of the biggest things that people forget is that Etsy ads contribute to the organic growth of your shop as well. So if you launch an Etsy listing for the first time and you put Etsy ads on immediately, your Etsy stats might look something like this, where the yellow is showing you the source of traffic is Etsy ads and that purpley blue is your organic traffic. But over time, as you get more clicks than your competition, more sales, more reviews, what you're going to see happen is that that yellow piece of the pie is actually going to shrink and the organic SEO is going to grow because that you've gained momentum faster and get indexed organically more towards the top search pages compared to your competition. So there's two reasons people really don't like Etsy ads. The first reason is because they built a business model that doesn't make sense financially after you factor in in a marketing cost percentage, which is the absolute worst thing and the most dangerous thing that you can do in business. Every business should have a marketing cost percentage projected and built into your sale price because the day that you do need to invest in marketing and competition is fierce, your product line doesn't make sense after you factor in that huge variable cost expense. Your marketing costs in business is one of the biggest pieces of your <laughs> expense pie chart. Doesn't mean it's the biggest, but it's definitely a good chunk of it. So you need to make sure that your product sale prices and your expenses make sense after you factor in some sort of marketing cost percentage. The second reason that people are, tend to be against Etsy ads is because they already don't know their net profit percentage before marketing. Your net profit percentage before marketing is a vital metric that you need to know before you even start spending money on ads. So it's a really comfortable idea to then dish out more money to this variable expense when they already don't know how much money they're making. ProfitTree.io is actually the first ever real-time profit tracking solution that visually helps you see this breakdown in your business. It breaks down your actual real-time profit in your Etsy store after your Etsy selling fees, your merchant fees, listing fees, your cost of goods sold or your product costs, your ad costs. It shows you your profit, but more so when it comes to scaling your Etsy ads, it shows you a visual of what's actually left over for you to invest. Profit Tree is actually coming out with a new tool that's coming live soon here, where it's actually going to give you a better visual of how to optimize your Etsy ads as well. Because actually truthfully right now inside the Etsy ads platform, Etsy doesn't even give you a single metric that is actually useful for you to optimize your ads. If you watch my full Etsy ads masterclass training, I'm going to show you how to actually optimize your ads properly, but Etsy makes it very difficult for you to optimize your ads because the Etsy ads page doesn't actually show you anything that you need to know in order to make a decision about turning things on and off. You still have to do a manual calculation yourself. And so profit trade, like I said, is actually launching a tool that's going to put all the information you need on one page for you so you can make decisions about Etsy ads. This feature is not live yet. It's about to go live, but if you are interested, the link is going to be in the description for you to check that out. So not only is it going to help you basically run your ads, but it's going to give you a holistic visual of the health of your shop in terms of profit, which is the most important metric that we need to know in business. Etsy ads is not a game of just turning it on because Hannah said to turn it on and it's going to protect my store from competition. Etsy ads should make you more profit as well. It shouldn't just increase revenue, it should increase profit. And if it's not increasing profit for you, then you're not optimizing them wrong or you haven't built strict enough parameters in your business to know when to turn things on and off. And that's another big objection that I get is, Hannah, I make more money with Etsy ads off. And my argument to that is that's probably true with the current state of how you're optimizing them. Again, Etsy makes it really hard for people to know how to optimize them because the Etsy ads page isn't actually giving you any information that you actually need to optimize your Etsy ads. But don't worry, the solution is on its way. Make sure you check out all of the free resources and trainings that I've shared with you so you can make sure that you are maintaining and getting your rank on the first page of Etsy.